Welcome to my tutorial on the new, very exciting Sensory Percussion plugin. This is the same jive as we've all come to love in standalone software, except now it's wrapped up in a convenient plugin format. This is a game changer in a lot of ways pertaining to Ableton integration. First, we'll walk through a template for using the Sensory Percussion plugin for audio and MIDI input and output. Then we'll take a closer look at using the built-in sampler in the Ableton context and wrap up exploring using the Sensory Percussion plugin to play Ableton drum racks and soft synths via MIDI. We'll be using three different Ableton Live sets in this video. These are available on my Patreon or my website for those of you that prefer a more hands-on learning approach. Links are in the description below. So, here is my template for the Sensory Percussion plugin. If you've kept up with the Sunhouse blog or pay attention to the manual, Sunhouse has a template. Just to be clear, that template is basically this component. Here's a breakdown of what's going on here. This folder contains audio tracks for sensor input. Notice that each sensor's audio is routed to the Sensory Percussion plugin's respective drum channels. With those record enabled, you can now see the sensor input in the sensory percussion plugin and proceed as normal with your sensory percussion workflow. This folder parses out each drum's audio individually, making it super easy to multi-track record or process the sound separately in the Ableton domain. If you're monitoring with the separate output tracks, just make sure you aren't also monitoring with the sensory percussion plugin. The rest of this template pertains to MIDI input and output with the SP plugin. This track is purely for MIDI mapping controllers from sensory percussion to parameters of Ableton. These tracks receive MIDI from each drum individually. There's more to unpack here, but we'll save that for the MIDI component of this video. This final track is for kit switching in the sensory percussion plugin. I like to use clips to switch sensory percussion kits so I can stay in session view for a live show and don't have to open the plugin just to pull up a new kit. Each one of these clips just has a MIDI note in it, and I've mapped those within sensory percussion to select kits 1 through 8. I find this particularly handy if you are using Ableton for things other than sensory percussion. It keeps everything organized and in sync. Let's check out what it looks like to route audio out of the sensory percussion plugin. In this session, I deleted the separated drum MIDI output tracks because we don't need them. However, I left this main MIDI output, which sends the sensory percussion MIDI into the IAC bus. I'll explain why in a second. We're just going to use three drums. Pretty simple kick, snare, hat. Notice that we have separate audio coming out of these channels, so this is going to be a breeze to record, loop, etc. I'm using velocity to modulate the sample length of the snare and hat. I'm also using velocity on this MIDI CC output. I have this MIDI CC mapped to the send level, which is throwing this sound to delay. While I could have used the sensory percussion delay within the plugin in exactly the same fashion, I wanted to make a point about how in Ableton we have access to tempo synced effects. In situations where your delay needs to be locked in, this makes it effortless to sync up with clicks, tracks, whatever you may have going. So let's undo this mapping and walk through the setting it up. To make a MIDI mapping, all we have to do is select the parameter we want to control, and then move the parameter we want to control it with. This is slightly annoying. We're going to have to move the sensory percussion window way over to the side so we don't have to click anything between the two knob selections. I decided to use a program called Keyboard Maestro to create a little script to automate moving the sensory percussion window way over so this action, which I do a lot of, is less mousy. So all I have to do is hit ZZZ, and the sensory percussion window moves out of my way, leaving just the CC knobs visible. Now I can easily go into MIDI mapping mode, Command M on a Mac, select the send knob, then wiggle this CC knob in sensory percussion, and now I'm using the velocity controller to control the send level in Ableton Live. This type of mapping is not possible without first sending the MIDI from sensory percussion into the IAC bus. That's why we need this channel. 
Something you need to be aware of with this kind of workflow is that the sensory percussion plugin cannot send out multiple channels of MIDI. This means that the MIDI channel setting on each drum is ignored and all MIDI output is truncated to one channel. In the past, I've enjoyed sending MIDI from sensory percussion into Ableton on separate MIDI channels, just so I don't have to worry about overlapping MIDI notes or CC numbers. For instance, with the plugin, I'm doing the same trick on drum 3, where I use velocity to control the send to delay. However, because all the MIDI from sensory is sharing one channel, I need to be mindful that I'm already using CC0, so this needs to be CC1. It gets dicey when creating assignments on different drum pages when you can't see all of them at once, so I'd recommend putting all your CCs on one drum channel if you're going to have a lot of CCs going. It's unfortunate the plugin can't support multi-channel MIDI, but I feel like the benefits we gain with the plugin outweigh that one drawback. On this kit switching track, we have three clips, which will select kits one through three respectively. I've taken to using this approach to organizing the different kits I need for a show, mainly because it gives you one less thing to think about in the moment. It's nice if you are using tempo synced effects, you can include the tempo in the scene and change the tempo and kit simultaneously. Your scenes can then act like your set list, and you can reorganize as needed, all in one place. You can actually take this a step further and literally sequence your kits in time. Check out this dynamic switching clip. The kits can switch super fast, literally creating their own implied rhythm according to the sequence. Now let's take a look at using the Sensory Percussion plugin to play instruments in live via MIDI. This set has a similar kick snare hat vibe except this time each sound is in an Ableton drum rack. You can put all of your drums on one rack and then just make sure your MIDI notes are set up properly, but I prefer to have each sound on its own track. You may recall me saying that the Sensory Percussion plugin only outputs on one MIDI channel. If you're wondering how I got each drum's MIDI on its own track, here's how. It's pretty simple. I used a convention of assigning each drum's MIDI notes within a specific octave. Drum 1 is on the C1 to B1 octave, drum 2 the C2 to B2 octave, and so on. On the track that receives MIDI, I grouped the device and then specified a range of notes that the group will listen to that corresponds to the MIDI notes and sensory percussion. This way, even though the whole kit's MIDI is coming down one channel, only the MIDI notes from the desired drum will come through to the device on this track. My favorite thing about using MIDI from sensory percussion is that you can go beyond samples and play other types of instruments. Check out this folder called Extra Sounds. Starting with this Drum 2 melodic track, it isolates the MIDI from drum 2, just like the drum sounds, and then uses MIDI effects to create a chord. This MIDI plays the analog soft synth. I have a clip up here that just automates this pitch effect, creating a chord progression for us. Then, for spice, here's a delay, and I'm modulating the rate with velocity from sensory percussion. Taking it up a notch, this Drum 1 bass track also plays an analog soft synth. It shares the same automation of a pitch effect so it can follow the chord progression. To give it some space, this clip also automates the chain selector, which just breaks the connection to the analog device every other measure. For a bit more in-depth information on this type of workflow, check out my tutorial on Sensory Percussion MIDI Output to Ableton Live. If you are a Sensory Percussion user and an Ableton Live user, I hope this leaves you excited to adopt the plugin version of Sensory into your workflow. I think this is a powerhouse combo of technologies that Sunhouse just made all the more convenient to explore.